The question we're asking today is how do you get accurate quantitation of methylation status for a particular CPG island? Dr. Dyson, I really enjoyed your talk this afternoon. And can you tell us a little bit more about your work on endometriosis? Absolutely. So most of what we've been doing right now has been trying to understand the epigenetic basis or how DNA methylation affects gene expression, specifically aberrant gene expression, in endometriotic cells. And you identified an important gene. Uh, is it GATA2? GATA2 is the gene that's normally expressed in healthy endometrial stromal cells. It's there necessarily in order for progesterone probably to function. What we see in endometriotic cells is a switch in GATA expression. In this case, GATA6, another isoform or another family member, somehow is able to replace or supplant GATA2. When GATA6 is expressed, first, it's being expressed because its DNA methylation is different. Second, by replacing GATA2, it allows many of the diseased phenotype uh, or many of the diseased gene expression profiles that we see to occur, particularly also affecting DNA methylation of many of those genes as well. And then you, after identifying these regions via a whole genome methylation microarray, you went ahead and drilled in on the promoter region, and then you chose a digital PCR solution. That's correct. So really what happened is we had a wonderful story showing in vitro what GATA6 was able to accomplish, but when we wanted to uh, verify the expression and the methylation pattern of GATA6, we really were stumped because the reviewers actually for our paper said, hey, please do methylation-specific PCR. Due to the heterogeneity in our samples, that really wasn't uh, amenable or even useful as a solution. Is that because methylation-specific PCR is just not precise enough? Um, I would say yes. It's a, it's a little outdated. Partially when you're using endpoint PCR, you can't quantify differences more subtle. Secondly, even when we tried to adapt it to more recent, like a real-time platform, uh, sample prep and background noise was really hard to separate. What we found is, is that whenever we used a multiplex PCR approach, using the Quant Studio, much like rare allele detection, we could easily drill down to five, two, three percent differences in methylation, which we've never been able to do before. That fit really well with our data, being able to verify on a sample-to-sample -sample basis that these were differentially methylated, allowed us to do statistical analysis to demonstrate what was correct, and probably most importantly as we move forward, we can use this in more of a high-throughput manner because now we can look at multiple samples which is something we couldn't do uh, using the array. So if I understand correctly, using digital PCR, you were able to get to 2 to 3% variation? We think so. Yes. Uh, probably, if it's as good as rare allele detection, we hope to drill down even further. Um, obviously, one of the caveats is that because the variation from sample to sample can often be high, what we're wanting to do is increase you know, sample replication get our N up so that we can get statistical significance as we move forward trying to understand how GATA6 affects methylation of other genes. It must be very interesting to be a reproductive biologist. I really enjoy working in this field. The, uh, one of the underappreciated things in reproductive biology, I think, is it's core to our existence. And I think people look at it and say, oh, you work in reproduction. We all wouldn't be here if, we didn't, if this didn't work. And it's really amazing to understand just how life exists. That's great. Thank you very much for presenting this afternoon. It's my pleasure. Again, it's my, I enjoyed it.